Attention, it's the last warning. We call for an immediate end to the war in the north of Spain. On April 26, 1937, the German Condor Legion aircraft, together with the Italian Air Force and the Coup Army, that revolted against the Republican government got involved in the Spanish Civil War. They bombed the small town of Guernica for three long hours. The bombardment left more than 300 civilians dead, people who had mainly taken refuge in shelters. The air raids destroyed 75% of the monuments in the historical city of Basque. When Hitler won the 1933 election, he started to reorganize German troops that were defeated in the First World War. The bombing of Guernica was the first operation of the German Condor Legion that was experts on carrying out bomb operations. The bombing continued in a periodic and systematic way until the city was leveled. Bombing civilians was unprecedented in Europe. Reef war took place in one of the colonial regions. The colonialists justified their attack on Reef under the excuse that the tribal people were barbarian and uncivilized. The incendiary bombs used in the Reef War contained toxic gases, but bombing civilians in Guernica was the first of its kind in Europe. Undoubtedly, the Spanish Civil War could be singled out as the reason behind these bomb attacks. Whether the bombs were ordinary or incendiary, the only thing that matters is the massacre of civilians. It is because of the Picasso's painting that today the world knows about Guernica more than before. The painting's contract was signed between Picasso and the Republican government in 1937 in Paris. This painting was brought here at the era of the democratic government in 1981 by the Union of Democratic Center, or UCD, and it belongs to the Spanish government. Today this painting is kept in the Reina Sofia Museum that represents an aristocratic family. Picasso had sold his artwork to a Republican government, and for sure he wouldn't have been happy had he known that his artwork is being kept in such a place. The Guernica's bombing provoked reactions at an international level for two reasons. First, Steer was a competent journalist, quite different from the yellow journalists who make their reports while lounging in their hotel rooms. Steer was residing in Macrada, Bicinia, and came here to do something positive. Steer knew that his respective country, Britain, that had previously announced its neutrality, had to be involved in the war and had to help the legitimate Republican government of Spain and the Basque. In his article published in The Times on April 28, Steer gives a detailed account of the Guernica's bombing by the German Air Force. The next day, Spanish fascists kidnapped Bichita, one of the intellectuals of Basque who was accompanying a group of French journalists as a translator. The fascists made the French journalists write a report and portray the Basque people as being behind the Guernica's bombing and setting it afire. When Franco decided to capture Madrid, four brigades of the Navarra army and Italian black shooters, including 26 soldiers under the command of generals Mola and Uscari, under the command of Generals Mola and Yuskari, occupied the area controlled by the Republican Army. Three days after the bombing, the Revolutionary Army forces destroyed Guernica, and a few days later, they captured Bilbao. 
Italian fascists and their allies, as well as the forces of the Spanish army, formed in 1911 by the African indigenous regular forces, started a campaign of terror among the people. The army and the indigenous regular forces were formed in 1911 before the civil war to save the lives of the Spanish soldiers. This group was trained for suicide attacks. They were fighting against their own people. They were a part of the Spanish army and were fighting with the resistance forces and their own nation. They were accustomed to colonial wars that resulted in devastated villages, rape and massacre. This is why some Spanish authorities had given the green light to these crimes. This was a smart method that had been used in colonial wars in Morocco. The people were afraid of them. To scare the militia in Sevilla region, they told them that they were not men. They said the real men will come and rape your wives. By real men, they meant the North African indigenous regular forces. Naturally, these actions spread terror among the people and the militia groups. Following the fall of Guernica, that I think happened two days after these events, the enemies were accompanied by the indigenous regular forces that were acting as part of the Spanish army. They were the advancing guards who had received more attention in the Andalusia fights. The advancing guards in the German and Italian squadrons passed the Strait of Gibraltar and committed every kind of crime. Their generals had given them the green light to scare people. It was terrible. They advanced from Andalusia to Extremadura and from there to the Madrid gates, where they faced resistance. The militia groups had organized some regular formations or primitive divisions that were trained to apply more professional and advanced methods. Despite their efforts, these militia groups couldn't resist the forces. The Allies massacred civilians as it was dangerous to leave them behind. It is crystal clear that such a hideous crime could not be committed without the consent of the Spanish authorities. I don't intend to include the entire Spanish authorities. Naturally, some of them were against application of such methods. However, the evidence shows that the advancing guards, legions, and the indigenous regular forces were engaged in the brutal violence. The ruthless tactics used in the Spanish Civil War were the same as those used in the colonial wars. The more the army gained power, the more violent they became. They intended to create a civil society in which military might was of overriding influence over social and civil principles, something that could not be tolerated by those who didn't want to relinquish power. Today, Spain remains as the only European country that has a colonial army. Some indigenous regular forces are stationed in Ceuta. This is the same foreign army or legion that is said to be involved in humanitarian affairs these days. Over time, the legion has changed its nature. I'm open-minded, but I can't accept creating a bright history for the legion filled with courageous acts and honor. I'm sorry, but I can't accept it. Un espíritu de violencia, un espíritu de querer, de y claro, cuando vino la república y quiso recortar. Y Spirle era un teórico de la guerra relámpago. There were two groups in the fascist bands. The first was Spurl, head of the German military department. He was one of the theorists of the thunder attack. Spurl wanted to bomb the town first and capture it later, but he had a serious disagreement with Franco. Franco didn't plan to bomb the town and occupy it. Rather, he intended to advance gradually, dominate the area and kill the people. He wasn't pursuing a thunder attack. That's why the Spanish Civil War lasted for three years. The war was prolonged due to the different military perspectives of the two involved parties. Spurl was planning a thunder attack on Guernica that included bombing to demoralize people and then capture the town and advancing. To this army, war meant winning, promotion and receiving medals. They looked at Morocco as their own property. 
Morocco gained independence in 1950s. The war ended in 1927. They took the reign of power in Morocco and considered it as their own asset and remained in power until the country's independence in 1956. For these reasons, in his book titled My Chats with Franco, Franco's cousin stated that the military forces were disappointed with the Morocco's independence. It's very hard for them to overlook one of their dearest and greatest conquests that was a source of pride and income, the land that was considered as their personal property. In Biscaya and Gipuzkoa, some people managed to flee from the country. But there were still various kinds of suppression, including executions without trials. Meanwhile, after 1937, the ceremonial courts issued some severe sentences, such as long-term imprisonments and executions. Convictions, imprisonments and exiles are the three issues that should be addressed in depth. Later, they started to diminish the experts. Assassination, imprisonment and exile. The foundations of suppression were observed in Bizkaia as well. On April 29, pro-Franco groups entered the town. Three days after the bombing, Laurexia, the writer and journalist who wrote for Uskaria newspaper, was arrested here. He was taken to Gastez. Two months later, he was executed following a drumhead court martial in June 1937. What was his crime? Accompanying a journalist who came from Bordeaux to see the town's destruction, he had been previously one of the members of the Basque Nationalist Party. There was the same suppression in Bizkaia. These acts of violence only differed on the surface. In June 1937, they occupied Biscaya and entered Bilbao on June the 19th. Thus, the political leaders had the chance to escape from the country. But in Navarra, they arrested almost all army generals, heads of factions and political syndicates. It was a brutal suppression. But there was still crackdown in the form of imprisonment, execution and assassination. After 1937, the trials were carried out in the repressive judicial organizations established by Franco's supporters. The people who were jailed in Santona stood several trials and many of them were sentenced to death. In the meantime, in Navarra, most of those who were executed in the summer of 1936 were not given access to any trials. Since 1937, pro-Franco's courts were held according to the same rules, but they didn't result in anything except for execution, assassination and imprisonment. As Franco's supporters assumed more power, they tried to change Spain to a prison and to exile people. Terror is the only memory of my childhood in Guernica. People were scared of talking. They didn't express their views on certain issues. Even they didn't talk in the presence of strangers or children. In the 1960s as a teenager, I started to feel the atmosphere of terror and silence of those days. The dark days had affected everyone, especially those who were defeated in the war. The winners put forth their own rules and secured high-ranking positions. They were appointed as mayors or members of the city council. They confiscated the farmlands of the defeated parties, even in some cases they stole their farmland, and received the official deeds. There was ruthless suppression in the 1960s. Manuel Hidalgo was a captain from Guecho in Basque. He had two vice presidents named Pachin and Salas. They were uncivilized people who controlled people and were informed of their whole affairs. They tortured everyone, including Juan Chutaguera and Jesus Montero, who were the agents of our committee. When ETA, an armed Basque nationalist and separatist organization, started its activities in the 1960s, many people had to escape from the country. Thus, power was left in the hands of the military forces that exerted excessive pressure on people and violently suppressed them and their culture. Sometimes we speak of cultural genocide. 
That means people are not allowed to speak their own language and publish their own newspapers and magazines in the Euskera or Basque language, or even teach the language in schools. Instead, some textbooks such as Formation of a Nationalist Spirit that should have revealed the true nature of the regime were just spreading lies. In recent decades, Guernica has turned to a venue for negotiations between nations that have fallen victim to bomb attacks over the course of history. In the ceremony held to mark the 75th anniversary of the Guernica bombing, the other bomb cities as well as the militia groups who fought in the Spanish Civil War and supported the Republican government were honored. But the remnants of Franco's regime in Spain made no effort to make up for their dark past. Jose Mario Amero was among a group of attorneys who started their activities in Madrid. We managed to contact him and meet him in his office. He helped us visit Pio Cambanilas in the Ministry of Culture. He also referred us to the German and Polish embassies in Madrid. Jose Mario Amero was a Spanish attorney and a skillful manager. He told us that what happened in Guernica mattered a lot to him. With the help of the influential people of the village, we launched a campaign and drew up a petition. He told us that he had called Garillo, a person who helped Guernica to prosper. Moreover, he contacted Felipe González and garnered his support for Guernica. In a meeting with Pio Cambanilas, we discussed four issues. He said, the history puts everything in its place and no one wants to know anything at that point. This sentence has been engraved in my mind forever and shows that all politicians are the same. The sentence is almost true. However, when history repeats itself, it would be too late and the criminals managed to escape justice. We launched an investigation into the historical memories and particularly written complaints. Actually, we did whatever we could do. We resorted to every possible means to ask the Spanish government to acknowledge what had happened here and its root causes. All of our efforts were in vain and probably we will fail to do the same in the future. The Spanish people don't confirm anything. They act like those churches that admitted their guilt 500 years later. The legitimate government of Spain was not responsible for the country's civil war. The legitimate Republican government should not apologize for what had happened in Guernica. The successes of Franco's regime are legitimate and democratic governments. The incumbent Republican government of Spain should not apologize for the Guernica's bombing. But the Spanish government should recognize the offensive and compensate the victims. It's not a hard task. In addition to marking the anniversary of the event, they could find the corpses, pay reparations to victims and admit the trials and imprisonment sentences were unjust. Such an offensive behaviour towards civilians is not acceptable at the time of war, and it's a grave injustice. I want to speak about Picasso's painting. Now, many people attach themselves to this painting. This painting has travelled more than any other contemporary paintings. It has gone from Paris to New York and has been exchanged several times. It should be brought here once. It's mean of them not to bring the Picasso's painting here when Madrid is full of art museums such as El Prado, Thyssen and Reina Sofia. What could be more beautiful than this? Symbolically, Guernica should be kept in Guernica. Like before, these days, we defend ourselves and say Guernica will remain Guernica. This is rubbish, because we lost the war. As per the saying, you lose the war if you fail to gain freedom. 
I think that we should continue this fight until we prove our innocence. I'm not sure of this government, but I hope that the future government speed up reconstruction of the town, go beyond symbolic acts, and help the Guernica back home. On the occasion of the 39th anniversary of the Ganika bombings, we decided to hold a ceremony with the attendance of our friends and relatives instead of putting an article in the newspaper. The 50th anniversary of the 1987 bombing was held in a different way. It was organized by public associations, institutions, politicians, and the guilds of Guernica. Many people attended and several plays were performed. It was an event that raised Guernica's profile to an exalted position. Likewise, all public associations and organizations took part in the ceremony to mark the 75th anniversary of the Guernica bombing. Guernica 3887, 50th anniversary in 1987, to mark the 50th anniversary of the bombings, we formed a commission and focused on the historical aspects of the issue. In 10 days, Guernica exploded with population as all walks of life, including journalists, academics, athletes, intellectuals and young people, attended the ceremony. The ceremony included theatrical and street plays performed by various groups. It also facilitated the publication of some books. The event was held in celebration of the Basque motherland. Thousands of people, including Petra Kelly, representative of the Green Faction, and Gert Bastian, one of the German pro-peace generals, paraded in this village. They said that they were ashamed of being German and of denying responsibility for the Ganika's bomb attack. Dulce September, representative of the African National Congress in Europe and a supporter of Mandela, was among the attendees. He was assassinated some years later in Paris by South Africa's police. Historians like Sword, as well as some other intellectuals, attended the ceremony from all over the world. Many people visited Guernica for the first time. I come from a Republican family, and to me, Guernica is the symbol of freedom. It's not only the symbol of freedom for the Basque nation, but also for Spain. This is why I'm so excited about visiting Guernica. Moreover, it's quite interesting that Maria is an original female name in the Basque language. It's pure Basque. <laughs> <laughs> One grandchild. I hope they remain as free a people as those who are not exploited by anyone. They commemorated the memory of George Steer, a journalist who stood against the war and the violation of human rights. The Guernica Prize for Peace and Reconciliation was handed to Roman Herzog, the ex-German president, as well as Lokari and Guernica Gogoratu's institutes. In addition, a sculpture of Nestor Bastaratkia, named the Agony of Fire, Los was somos un pueblo que yo... We claim to be a role model, but on the other hand, we know that some other cities and towns have suffered more pain. We are against war and stand for peace. I mean true peace. We are for peace, justice and freedom. We, the people of Basque, are a nation with an age-old history, dating back to thousands of years. While many towns disappeared in Europe, we have managed to survive, to see the start of the 21st century. We are an independent nation that has experienced several wars and genocide. They destroyed our culture. As the 21st century gets into stride, we, the people of Basque, are still living in the Western Pyrenees Mountains and have preserved our language and culture. These are our assets. We intend to disseminate our culture. We have to protect our ideology and language as our assets in the same way that ecologists make efforts to revive a flower regardless of how small it may be. We are of the opinion that as humans we should stand against equality and support nations, cultures, languages and minority groups, things that today are beginning to fade. We, the people of Basque, have reached the 21st century and want to live here for the good of all.
XXI y pretendemos seguir aquí. Queremos seguir aquí. city of Basque. When Hitler won the 1933 election, he started to reorganize German troops that were defeated in the First World War. The bombing of Guernica was the first operation of the German Condor Legion that was expert on carrying out bomb operations. The bombing continued in a periodic and systematic way until the city was leveled. Bombing civilians was unprecedented in Europe. Rift War took place in one of the colonial regions. The colonialists justified their attack on Rif under the excuse that the tribal people were barbarian and uncivilized. The incendiary bombs used in the Rift War contained toxic gases, but bombing civilians in Guernica was the first of its kind in Europe. Undoubtedly, the Spanish Civil War could be singled out as the reason behind these bomb attacks. Whether the bombs were ordinary or incendiary, the only thing that matters is the massacre of civilians. It is because of the Picasso's painting that today the world knows about Guernica more than before. The painting's contract was signed between Picasso and the Republican government in 1937 in Paris. This painting was brought here at the era of the democratic government in 1981 by the Union of Democratic Center, or UCD, and it belongs to the Spanish government. Today this painting is kept in the Reina Sofia Museum that represents an aristocratic family. On April 26, 1937, the German Condor Legion aircraft, together with the Italian Air Force and the coup army that revolted against the Republican government, got involved in the Spanish Civil War. They bombed the small town of Guernica for three long hours. The bombardment left more than 300 civilians dead, people who had mainly taken refuge in shelters. The air raids destroyed 75% of the monuments in the historic Attention, it's the last warning. We call for an immediate end to the war in the north of Spain. <laughs> 